Uh, we didn't uh, think we would witness living in America, and uh, you know I don't want to talk politics, but just to uh, make a small reference, and, and um, because it, it inspired me to talk about what we want to talk about today, inshallah. Uh, we saw um, uh, a mob of thousands of people uh, infiltrate the nation's capital, and uh, you know, this is something that America warns Americans when they travel overseas to the Middle East and other places, beware, don't, don't go here, don't go there, because things made dangerous. Other countries were issuing those warnings about the, what was happening here in America. And all of that was done because the, the leader of this country, the president, uh, kept on provoking and egging on for months. Uh, uh, about the fraudulent, fraudulent election and all of these things until what happened happened. And then in the very end he retracted and he said um, all of those that have done what you have done will be persecuted to the full extent of the law and so on and so forth. Pushed them on, egged them on and so forth. But in the end when push came to shove, completely backed off and threw everybody under the bus and wiped his hands clean. And this reminds me, uh, dear brothers, and sisters about uh, the method of shaitan, the method of Satan, and what he does with humanity. And we read where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Shaitan, who tells the human being, who tells humanity in general, to disbelieve. Leave your belief of Allah behind. This does not, uh, you will gain nothing from that. You worshiping Allah in this world. This is Shaitan's message to human, human, humankind. And when the human being responds to his call, falls for his trap, and disregards Allah and say, well, if there was a God, then there wouldn't be suffering, and there wouldn't be this, and there wouldn't be that, and if there was a God, then I wouldn't have these difficulties in my life and all of these things. Then what happens? Then when the final day comes, when the moment of truth comes and we have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life, Shaitan says what? He says, Inni bari ummik. He says, I'm free of you. I don't have nothing to do with you. I only suggest it to you. And you're responsible for your actions. And Shaitan says, Inni akhaf Allah rab, inni akhaf Allah rab al -amin. And I uh, fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Of course, he doesn't truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, otherwise he wouldn't do that, but this is his excuse at the moment. So, so you know, we see this interesting parallel to what happened in these, uh, in the, I don't know how long it was, two days ago? SubhanAllah, it seems like so much has happened since then. Uh, a very, SubhanAllah, you know, stark um, similarity there. And so I want to focus on this on this uh, uh, prompting of Shaytan and what he calls us to and his goals in terms of how he works. And um, you know, it's important when we see things take place in the world, um, it's easy to point the finger, it's easy to get lost in the news feed, it's easy to blame, it's easy to say, uh, look at all of the chaos and look at the this and look at the that. And sometimes we forget our, about ourselves in the meantime. And so when we see things happen in the world around us, we have to take a ibrah, we have to take a lesson, we have to take some heed um, and take something for ourselves. Because you're not going to take, you're not going to spiritually grow when you watch the news and you get caught into the, you know, just because a lot of us are consumed by it. It is consuming by its very nature. Um, but it's not going to allow for your spiritual development or growth. And so that's why when we see things take place in the world, we have to take it and say, well, wait a second, what can I apply to my life and how can I spin this so that I can take something and learn uh, some lessons from my life. And so that's what I'm doing 
with you today, dear brothers and sisters, to talk about the goals of shaitan and how he works. And uh, shaitan, as we know, uh, is our sworn enemy. And this is from day one, from the creation of first man, Adam, um, and he opposed uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and he fell and uh, you know of course he was put to disgrace he was cast out that's what a shaitan uh, 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 means the one who is far away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is a rajim he is the one who's thrown out and from that day from the beginning of the creation of man uh, until now he is our sworn enemy uh, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوُّ مُبِينَ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again and again and again. He is your very clear enemy. So what are his goals and what are, how does he function and what has he tried to make us do? So shaitan's number one goal with humanity is always to take him out of a state of belief. To take him away from iman. To take uh, a human being from believing that in their creator and in the great, uh, and in, in, in that relationship that we are supposed to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are His slaves and He is our Lord, to, for us to disavow that, to throw that out. And His goal is to bring us within His grasp and so that we will be in the same situation that He will be where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ That He calls His people, his party, to be from the, the uh, uh, companions of the fire. So this is shaitan's ultimate goal, to cast, uh, to put the human being into a state of kufr. And when, um, when shaitan is successful in this, then a person becomes the slave of shaitan and leaves his rubudiyya, his uh, being, you know, his state of being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many people do not realize that. Right? They say, wait, wait a second, what do you mean? I'm not a, I'm not a Satan worshiper. I don't worship uh, shaitan. But if you follow uh, shaitan's footsteps, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ right? Don't follow shaitan's footsteps. When you follow his footsteps, you're following him. You're becoming subservient to him. And so, um, it's important that a person realizes that. You move away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you follow your desires, you follow what shaitan calls you to, then somebody becomes a worshiper of him and they become a kafir billahi ta'ala with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his number one supreme goal. Number two, if shaitan is not successful in being able to do that, then shaitan will uh, work to have the servant of Allah uh, fall into major sin. Shaitan will provoke, will prompt, will suggest, um, and will use all of his agents uh, to misguide the human being by involving them in sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُقَعَ بَيْنَكُمْ that um, uh, shaitan, he wants to place between you enmity for you to fight with one another and for you to hate and despise one another, to see each other in a negative light, to be suspicious of one another, to not give your brother and sister the benefit of the doubt. This is shaitan's goal, and he's trying to get you to fall into drinking, into gambling, and all of these other sort of sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَةِ That shaitan, he commands you to evil and to, um, and to uh, you know, transgressions that are very unbecoming of the human being. Right? Things that are very unbecoming of the human being. And he wants you to say that about Allah which you do not know. And that is why it's very dangerous for a person to speak about God, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without knowledge. Right? To assume 
and to say what who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and what he wants and you don't know and we don't know and the only way we know is by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger tell us so this is his second goal that he wants to um, he wants to constantly engage us in being involved in uh, in big uh, sin in very in al kabair in those things that are very uh, you know uh, in affront to Allah subhanahu wa taala and um, that's his second goal. If he is not able to do that, see he goes he works down the ladder. He doesn't leave the human being for a moment. Some people say, well, you know, what if somebody is a, you know, a, a, an avid worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who is wali, somebody who has a close status with Allah and so forth, doesn't shaitan, shaitan doesn't leave anybody alone. And we have stories the Prophet sallallahu would tell us about people uh, who would be cast out uh, um, from their great status of being a worshiper from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to somebody who would follow shaitan's uh, footsteps. The shay- if the shaitan cannot get the believer to fall into kufr or fall into sin, and this is important, brothers and sisters, this is not some theoretical you know, discussion that I'm having with you. We have to look at ourselves, where, do, where is he working in my life, right? And so if he can't get us to do this, then he will try to engage us in what we call the small sins, right? In things that we don't sometimes pay attention to we say well you know what it's okay if sometimes i do this and i do that so you have to recognize first of all the word sin is still there um, and it's something that we will be held accountable for and it is something that will, we will be punished for the the evil that we do this what people call maybe white lies or um you know some act of of looking at something that is inappropriate maybe you didn't hurt anybody but you definitely hurt yourself. وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ You know, that وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ That they uh, uh, wronged their own souls. And uh, Al-Imam Ahmad, he relates the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where the Prophet uh, warned us about discounting, about, you know, just brushing aside small sins. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, they are like a group of people who went out searching for branches for a fire. Everybody goes and they collect a small little mini, a small twig, small stick. Everybody brings it. You can't do much with the small stick. It's not going to keep you warm at night. But everybody brings something small and they, they put it to the fire. And what happens? Very quickly it becomes a large fire. And um, that is the case with small sins. They add up very quickly and they put the one uh, that has been afflicted by them in a very precarious situation uh, and in a dangerous state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we don't discount those things. And again, you know, in this world that we live in with all of the imagery that we are surrounded with, all you have to do is press a button and you open up a door to all of these, all of this uh, filth to, to come into your soul. And you have to see it that way. It's very important. People read the news feed and you, and you, know, um, you know that some news feeds, in that news feed there is going to be foul language. If you open up that movie or you watch that TV show, you know there is going to be um, nudity or things, images that are inappropriate. You know that, but you, but somebody has become so used to it, and you say, well, it's not really a big deal. Right? It is a big deal, according to the Prophet wasallam, and for our soul. And in fact, it is the prompting of shaitan that allows us to fall in that to begin with. If shaitan is not able to get us, to take us to kufr, or to make us commit uh, big sins, or even small sins, what will he do? He will try to keep us from performing good deeds. So he says, okay, this guy, I can't touch him. He, he knows his limits. He's not going to crap, uh, cross them. But he will try to uh, make us not engage in that which is beneficial to us. And shaitan is always waiting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قال فبما أغويتني لأقعدن لهم صراطك المستقيم ثم لآتينهم من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم ولا تجد أكثرهم شاكرين That this, the, these are the words of shaytan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us He says because you have Mis, because you have misguided me, Shaytan speaking to Allah, I will sit waiting for them on your straight path. So this, it's, we're on the straight path, but Shaytan is sitting there waiting. And he says, Shaytan says, and then I will come to them in front of them, from behind them, on their right, on their left. From every angle, he's waiting all the time. And you will find most of them are not thankful. You will find that most of them are not thankful. So, so the, the, the point here being that, yes, maybe somebody is, has been successful in, in leading a good lifestyle, free of engaging in that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but shaitan, he will try his best to stop you from uh, doing that which will benefit you. Right, to increasing your hasanat. And um, somebody may think that we're successful, right? I'm living a good life, I'm not falling into sin, but, but that shouldn't put us in a state of complacency, right? Where we don't act, where we don't try to do good, we, where we don't strive to do good. And then the next step that the shaitan, he will take the human being into, is that he will uh, busy a person in engaging in those things which are not of benefit to them. They're not sinful, they're not something that you are going to necessarily be held accountable for, but the fact that somebody will sit for hours on end a day and read the news, for example, or watch um, you know, some uh, mindless TV programs, or watch uh, on a daily basis, they have to watch their two hours or three hours of their, you know, whatever sport is in season. Engaging themselves, at, or, or for young people, this is a big issue where they spend hours upon end just playing video games, right? Activities that are not intellectually beneficial, are not spiritually beneficial, are not something where somebody is spending time with their family, engaging with other people, and or developing themselves. Right? And so the shaitan, he will busy our, us with that. That is one of his goals. So we should be conscious of that when we find ourselves and you look at your iPhone and it says, you know, your, your uh, average, your daily average for the last week was seven or eight or nine hours, there's a problem, right? We have to pay attention. Well, wait a second, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything wrong, but I'm not doing anything that's beneficial to me and I'm engaging in, in, a, in a lifestyle um, that is not uh, um, helping me to grow and is not increasing my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last um, thing that the shaitan will do, um, when somebody lives a, a good, healthy Muslim lifestyle, shaitan will still not stop. You do good deeds. Uh, you do that which is beneficial for humanity, for society, for yourself. Shaitan is still there. And, he, and what is he doing at this point? At this point, he is trying to do. He is trying to make it so that the good that you do, you are no longer doing it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but you are doing it for some other uh, reason. Or he will distract you from, um, uh, you know, from take from doing things sincerely for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's sake. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, in, in the Hadith that the shaytan, he comes between me and my prayer and my recitation of the Qur'an and he confuses me. So this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was not uh, free from the tempting of shaytan. The Prophet sallallahu was the best of humanity and he is able to navigate in the best way but he is not even free from that tempting, is ma'soom, he's, he's free of sin, but that doesn't mean the shaitan didn't have access to him like he does to everybody else. And then the Prophet wasallam, he says, there is a shaitan, he is called khinzab. And that 
what he comes to you in your prayer and um, he will try to distract you from your prayer and the Prophet ﷺ, he tells the process uh, the, the, the most beneficial action that we make in our life as Muslims is when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bow down to him in that process shaitan is trying to intervene and the Prophet ﷺ, he says the shaitan when he hears the uh, call for the prayer he runs away and then he comes back and he starts to whisper to the, the, the person that's about to pray and then the iqama comes he runs away and then the prayer starts and then he comes back and he starts whispering again and the Prophet ﷺ, he says um, and he comes and he, and he says to the human being Remember this, remember that, what is going on in your life after, after you pray, mashallah, there's some good biryani waiting for you, I can't wait to finish, or I gotta do this project, I gotta do that project. He has your mind busy in the salah. And that is from the shaitan. Right? So the shaitan, he never gives up, even at the most, uh, con even when we should be most concentrated, he is there and uh, um, trying to impose himself in our lives. And um, the Prophet ﷺ, he said specifically about when it comes to the prayer that a person should say to themselves, أَعَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And this is a general rule in life. When you feel yourself being distracted, when you feel shaitan is prompting you to do this or do that, the easiest, most simplest way to cast him, cast him out, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Oh Allah, I seek your, your number one, you're calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then number two, you are acknowledging what is going on with you that you're being distracted by shaitan. And you're asking Allah, take him out of here. And then in the prayer in specific, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, you uh, blow, you spit to your left side three times. Spittle, very light, like that. Um, and that is how you cast the shaitan out of your prayer. And, and that is something we should be constantly, as Muslims, being uh, aware of the fact that we have to ensure that our lives are lived for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we're not distracted by shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are guided at all times. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد. أذي من السستاز I start for those that came later I started off the khutbah by talking about um, um, you know just relating some of the events that we experienced um, in the last couple of days uh, where this mob and we saw you know in this mob the great contradictions of America the great contradictions of America where a mob of 30,000 mostly white people, supporters of the president, uh, who these people think he's speaking the truth, but he's speaking absolute lies and calling them to an end uh, that is takes you nowhere. Right? Just like the shaitan takes, calls you to an end that will take you nowhere, and, and not will only take you nowhere, will take you down. Um, and we saw the great contradictions and double standards of America when earlier in the year you had Bla the Black Lives Matter movement and they had a march on the Capitol and the massive show of force, police force and others that were there against them and all of the other contradictions that we saw um, in these last couple of days and we used those uh, events to relate to talk about the subject that we talked about today. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see the truth for truth and to follow it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see falsehood as falsehood, as falsehood and to stay away from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see the tricks of shaitan as they manifest in, in our lives and help us to be um, conscious um, that he is always there trying to get access to us and allow us to repel him. Ya, ya Allah, we ask you to help us in our fight against our own nafs. We ask you to help us in our fight against our own desires. We ask you, Ya Allah, to help us to make, uh, to make us from those who always follow your way and not the way 
of the shaytan. Allahumma inni da'in faqulu ameen. Allahumma aqfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'awat Allahumma a'izzat islam wal muslimin Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah wa arina al ba'atila ba'atilan warzuqna ajtinaba اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أقم الصلاة